Yeah, I know. My video's late because I didn't get an iPhone 10 until D brand actually bought one, skinned it, and shipped it to me. But unlike some people, I'm not gonna make a big salty song and dance out of it because frankly, if I was Apple, I probably wouldn't feel like spending the $1,000 or even $370 to hear what I'm about to say about their latest and greatest either. Especially in front of their store, which is under renovation. I wanted to do this in front of the cube. Today's video is brought to you by Mac Weldon. I was gonna wear the shirt, but it's so cold. Mac Weldon believes in smart design, premium fabrics, and simple shopping. Use offer code TECHTIPS at the link below to get 20% off on your next order. Now, if the iPhone 8 and the 8 Plus are fraternal twins, then the 10 is kind of like the love child from that brief but intense affair that everyone knows mom had, but that no one talks about unless Uncle Gordon's had too much to drink. Apple reused almost every major internal component, making the 10 with its beefy battery, three gigs of RAM, and dual rear camera system, something familiar, kind of like a plus in a regular sized body, and yet something totally different because as iFixit revealed in their fantastic teardown, to achieve this spectacular density, they actually went back to a technique so old, we haven't seen it since the original iPhone, a dual PCB internal layout that in another creative move uses dual lithium ion batteries for maximum density. But while in some ways physically the 10 is what I've been asking Apple for for years, less concerned with reducing thickness and weight and more with increasing battery life and features like wireless charging, this comes at the cost of it feeling, well, kinda heavy and thick. To be clear, I still vastly prefer the form factor of the 10 compared to the 8 Plus. Its size makes it much easier to hold on to, even if its slim bezels mean an accidental drop is more likely to be fatal, it's just that the slight increase in unwieldiness compared to the 8 is compounded by the 10's unfamiliar new gesture-based controls. Before I get to those though, let's talk about the screen. I am sorely disappointed that my 120 hertz prediction didn't come true. But otherwise, it's everything that you could hope for from a top of the line phone in 2017. Apple took the best mobile OLED screen technology on the market from Samsung and tuned it to damn near perfection. It's the brightest OLED I've ever seen, making for the best direct sunlight viewing experience that I've seen yet, and the best rendering of HDR content that I've seen yet. And the ultra tall or uh, ultra wide, depending on how you look at it, aspect ratio combined with the stereo bottom firing and earpiece speaker combo makes it great for watching cinema aspect ratio content like movie uh, is what I would say if it weren't for the notch. Whoa. Now, for the vast majority of the content that you'll find on YouTube or Netflix, it and the rounded bottom corners will end up cut off by pillar boxes. But in movies, it is a literal black mark on what is otherwise the standard by which mobile displays can be measured. And while it's far less obnoxious, I did also notice it in day-to-day -day use. A lot of people might not care about something like this, but there's no room at the top anymore for your battery percent or your VPN connectivity status, requiring a swipe down from the top right to bring up the control center. Blah. So what do we get in return then? In tech enthusiast terms, we get a marvelously densely packed, not to mention incredibly sophisticated array of sensors, emitters, and cameras that had me hardcore nerding out. But everyone else just calls it Face ID. Without getting into the theoretically reduced security, I mean, no one that I know was able to unlock my phone, here's what it does really well. Downloading apps, buying stuff, or logging into websites is, in a word, amazing. It worked nearly flawlessly across all manner of challenging conditions, from cold days where you don't feel like taking off your gloves to touch, to bright sunlight, to pitch blackness, and even with a kid in my arms or a toothbrush hanging out of my mouth. And the feature that hides the details of your notifications until it recognizes you 
is a biometric authentication game changer. Okay, cool. Now here's what's less awesome. Because the 10 only auto wakes when it's right side up and has no obvious landmarks when the screen is off, like an always on clock, for example, and because it requires a swipe after it identifies you, I often found that it took me longer to unlock the 10 when I wanted to use my phone. Face ID, to be clear, is much better than Samsung's iris scanner across the board, but it still requires a special dance move to do something on your phone while it's sitting on the desk or table next to you. And back to that notification hiding thing, I really wish that it was a little bit faster. Like I've been using my old iPhone 6 as an MP3 player lately, and man, I forgot how much worse first gen touch ID was and how much better fast biometrics are compared to just having them at all. All right, fine then, Apple. A notch in the display for unlocking with wet hands. Okay, I can wait a little longer for you to put all this stuff behind the panel. And besides, the notch actually bothered me far less than the interface and navigation changes that were necessitated by the 10's lack of a home button. All the new gestures are easy to remember and felt natural within minutes to the point where I actually found myself swiping up on other devices. But multiple aspects of the new control scheme are marginally slower, reinforcing my belief that Apple is either run by or caters to people who just don't have a lot to do. These people, I assume, have all the time in the world to type names into their address book like a cave person instead of using T9 dialing, interact with their touchscreen, however little it might be, to quick launch their camera instead of double tapping a hardware button, they have time to pause mid-gesture to wait for multitasking to show up instead of pressing one button, though the slide to the right is quite a bit better. They have time to hold, then swipe or reach to the top of the screen to force close a frozen app. And finally, and yes, I'm repeating this one, they don't mind swiping their screen every time they unlock their phone. Now, I'm not saying that Apple did nothing right here. Control center from the top right is much more reliable now that it no longer gets confused by the on-screen keyboard. And on that subject, the dictation button under the on-screen keyboard is super convenient, which, wait a second, under the keyboard? Ha! <laughs> Leave it to Apple to figure out the most obvious stuff that everyone else missed. I've been complaining for years that on devices with small chin bars, it's harder to touch type. And they just went and put a space in there. Brilliant. Anyway, in fairness to Apple, the navigation isn't terrible. It's just also not as advertised. It's not like a quantum leap forward in the way that I interact my phone. And if anything, it makes me miss the Android back button even more than I normally do on iOS, not less. Now I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on the camera or an emojis, other than to say that if you liked the excellent eight plus camera, uh, and if you're a portrait mode, Foca fiend, you'll like the 10's camera. And that until Apple allows Animojis to be recorded and sent as video clips in third-party chat apps easily, I will be even less inclined to create awkward moments in public than I already am. So that brings me then to my conclusion. The original iPhone was first-gen execution of a brilliant idea. And the device that was created to celebrate its 10-year anniversary is brilliant execution of what feels like a first-gen idea. It really seems to me like Apple was trying really hard to make an innovative device, then make you like whatever they ended up with, rather than looking forward to what people wanted to do in their lives and building a solution around that. An approach that probably would have involved some more investment in Siri. So bottom line then, the iPhone 10 is what it took to make me more excited about the 8 and the 8 Plus, and ultimately go back to the S8 so that I can stop carrying around this stupid bag of headphone dongles. So this video was brought to you by the D brand grip. <laughs> My mom is so present. Never drop your phone again. Its key features include their revolutionary grip, their world-class D3O shock absorbing technology, an industry first carbon composite frame, full D brand skin compatibility so you can customize it still however you want using the D brand site and finally ultra tactile buttons 
I don't know quite how they did it, but they managed to make the buttons on your phone feel better for having their case on it. So check it out down at the link in the video description. So thanks for watching guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do, but if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button or check out the link to where to buy the stuff we featured in the video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like the one that I'm bundled up over top of and our community forum, which you should totally join.